All praise is going to our Heavenly Father, Jesus the Christ, and to each and every one of you assembled with us again on tonight. Uh, thank you for tuning in with us tonight. We uh, give all praise and glory to our Heavenly Father, Jesus Christ, and uh, we thank you again for being with us on this cold Wednesday evening. Uh, we're going to ask that you would bow your heads for a word of prayer. Father, we thank you tonight for this privilege of being here. We pray, God in this lesson that you open our hearts and minds that we may be receptive to your word, take us out of self, eyes behind your cross, give strength to you, preacher, and power to your word, and we will forever give you the praise and glory. Please forgive us now for our sins, and we ask that you would wipe our slate clean. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. All right, so we're going to continue our series on God's perfect will versus God's permissive will. And uh, a few weeks ago, we talked about Jonah uh, running from his assignment. And uh, last time we met, two weeks ago, we talked about being in the permissive will. When you are in the permit, his permissive will, you are making it about you. And uh, one of the sub points that we used uh, with that particular point was God's perfect will is never about you. But it's about the people that's attached to you. So whenever God asks you to do something, it's never about you. That you should not take it personally. That God has other people that's attached to your life that he's trying to bless. And, and we looked at Jonah's life. And um, the last time we met, we talked about Jonah and his obedience. And how uh, when he eventually obeyed God, after he had been swallowed by the whale or the fish, uh, he went and preached to Nineveh. And we looked at Jonah chapter 3, verses 3 and 4. And we see what happened after Jonah finally became, after Jonah finally, um, finally became obedient to God, that we saw how people were blessed because of his obedience. They said, this time Jonah obeyed. There it is. The Lord's command and went to Nineveh, a city so large that he took three days to see it all. On the day Jonah entered the city, he shouted to the crowds, 40 days from now, Nineveh will be destroyed. And the people of Nineveh believed God's message. And from the greatest to the least, they declared a fast and put on and put on burlap to show their sorrow. So because of his obedience, uh, other people were blessed. They believed. The people of Nineveh believed from the greatest to the least. They all believed God's message. But it only happened after Jonah uh, surrendered to God's perfect will. And when he surrendered to God's perfect will, the people that were attached to, his, to God's will were blessed. So that was the obedience part. So tonight we're going to look at, partially, uh, we're going to look at the people that were attached to his disobedience, okay? Because uh, this whole story, or this whole narrative is centered around uh, not only Jonah's eventual obedience, but his initial disobedience. And we are, we are in Genesis, we are in Jonah chapter 1, verse 3 through 5. We're going to look at this. It says, But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord, and went to Joppa, and he found a ship going to Tarsha. So he paid the fare thereof, and went down into it to go with them, to go with them unto Tarsha from the presence of the Lord. So, but the Lord sent out, but the Lord sent out a great wind to the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was like to be broken. Then the, the mariners were, or the sailors, were afraid, and cried every man unto his God cast forth the waves that were in the ship into the sea to lighten it of them. But Jonah was gone down into the side of the ship, and he lay and was fast asleep. <clears throat> so this is, the, this is the disobedience part. As we go back up to verse 3, we can go back to verse 3, we see the disobedience part of Jonah and how his disobedience were, was attached to other people. When he, when he lived outside of the perfect will of God, it affected other people. 
and, and, and we looked at a, a scripture a couple weeks ago that was found in Romans 14 and 7. It says, for we do not live for ourselves. And, you know, I ask that you would just mark that in your Bible because whenever God asks you to do something, whenever God is asking you uh, to do a task or an assignment, understand this scripture right here, that it's not for you, but it's for other people. We do not live for ourselves. And, and if Jonah would have embraced this particular word right here, then a lot of things that he went through, he wouldn't have had to went through. Because when he disobeyed God, other people were affected by that. So let's go back to Jonah 1 and 3. And we'll see what happened here. So, but Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord and went down to Joppa and he found a ship going to Tarshish. Now, this is, this, is a, this is what's so amazing about the permissive will of God. While you're in the permissive will of God, and this means, and we know permissive means that God allows it. So it, this is the point in Jonah's life where God has allowed it to happen. Now, he could have prevented it, but he didn't. So he allowed it to teach Jonah a lesson. But here's what, here's what can really be deceiving to us. Because a lot of times when, when we are outside of the will of God and we are, we are living a life that's disobedient to him, we think that trouble or problems should instantly manifest. But it doesn't necessarily happen like that. Sometimes, sometimes being out of the will of God and into his permissive will can give you the illusion that you're doing the right thing. This is why you never base, you never base your success or your failures on what takes place in your life. You base your success and your failures on the Word of God. The Word of God told him to go to Nineveh. We know that, but he went to Tarshish. But if you look at this particular B part of this verse, it, it would give you the impression that Jonah is doing a good thing. Because the Bible says he went down to Joppa and he found a ship. Now it just happened to be a ship right there in Tarshish. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the very place that he was trying to go. <laughs> Conveniently, he found a ship. Also what we can see that's convenient is that he had the right am amount of money to pay for the ship or to pay for the ticket. Conveniently, he found it. So this gives us the illusion that disobe disobeying God is successful. No hiccups, no problems, no incidents, no 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 hindrance. It was a, it was a, a, a it was fluid. He went to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord and went down to Joppa. And, and you really, if you really want to look at it, you can say it just happened to be a ship that was going in the direction he was going. But wait a minute. If I'm out the will of God, none of this should take place. But being in the permissive will can give you the illusion that you are you are getting ahead or getting by on God. But you're not. There's a lot of incidents where, where we, we may have disobeyed God and we said, ooh, I got away with that one. <laughs> but God, we didn't, we didn't get away with it. Because when you see here, so he paid the fare, that's telling us that sin cost. He was out of his money. Now, if you did it God's way in verse 2, maybe he wouldn't have to pay. Anytime we sin, it's going to cost. It's going to, anytime we walk in our own way and our own will, it's going to cost us. So we're not, you're not getting away with it. It might give you the illusion that the ship means that God is in, in your favor, but God did not contradict his word. God told him in verse 2 to go to Nineveh, not to go find a ship and go to Tarshish. But when you're doing what you want to do and things seem to be going in your favor, it gives you the illusion that you're getting away. 
And so you really have to be careful with that. And so if we didn't know the whole story, and if we just look at this part without looking at verse 2, and just looked at verse 3, we will say that Jonah got over on God. But in verse 2, it tells us that God told him to go to Nineveh. Mm -hmm. But Jonah, out of the will of God, into his own will, found a ship. So if we're looking at Jonah's life from the outside, if you just exclude what we know about him going to Nineveh, it looks like Jonah is doing a good thing. So this is why a lot of times we cannot base our success on worldly standards. The only thing we can base our success on is if, is if it's according to the word of God. And so we know at this point, Jonah is in God's permissive will and not God's perfect will. But on, on the outside looking in, it seems like God is in, or Jonah is in God's perfect will. So we can never judge the favor of God by worldly success no worldly standards. Sometimes Satan will assist you in your prosperity. Sometimes Satan will assist you in your prosperity. Let me show you what I mean. Let's look at Jesus and the temptation of Jesus in Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. We'll look at the temptation of Jesus. And remember who, remember who the devil is. The devil is the prince of this world. So in other words, God has given the devil control of, of, of the world system. He's given him that control. So watch this. This is, this is the devil tempting Jesus in the wilderness. He says, the devil took him to the peak of a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world. And their glory, he says, I will give you. It all to you. Now, wait a minute, he's talking to Jesus. Mm -hmm. but, but God has relinquished all this worldly stuff to him. So this is why when you're in disobedience, sometimes Satan will assist you in the prosperity. But be not dismayed or be not fooled. This is something the devil has given you. There it is. He tells Jesus, I will give it all to you if you will just fall down and worship me. In other words, I'm going to reward you with worldly success. See, the kingdom of the world. I'm going to give you all this worldly stuff if you just keep being outside of the will of God. Because remember, God had already told in the Old Testament that there should be no other God before me, that you should never worship any other God. He said that in the Ten Commandments. Jesus knew that. And look at what the devil comes and say. I'll give you this whole world if you would just kneel down and worship me. My Lord. Satan can assist you in the prosperity. This is why it's imperative that you know what God's word is saying. Because if you are being successful in the world, and you're outside of the will of God, you could be getting assist from the devil. Because right. only the word will let you know that if you're in the right track. Only the word. That's, how, that's why we know about Jonah. Again, if we were just looking at verse 3 in Jonah chapter 1, we would think Jonah is walking according to the word. He found a ship. Mm -hmm. It just happened to be there. He just happened to have the same amount of money to buy the ticket. Going to Tarshish. But we know the inside out. So when you look at your own life, you know the inside out. Now, you may look at me on the outside in and see all the stuff that's, that's accumulating in a person's life and say, wow, he must really be blessed. He must really be uh, be walking according to the word of God. But that's not necessarily true. Because if a person is not in that word and doing what the word has said, he could be getting assistance from the, from the devil. This is why the Bible tells us in Psalm 73, Psalm 73, verse 3, he said, the Asaph said, I envied, I envied the proud, which is the evil, when I saw them prosper. 
See, we 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 on the outside looking in because we think they got cars, homes, and we think they must really be doing what God said. That's not necessarily true. And Asaph said he looked at that, and he said, "I was envy of that when I saw the prosper in spite of, of their wickedness. They were they were prospering, but yet they were wicked." Until, let's go down to verse 16. He said, so I tried to understand why the wicked prosper. He said, but what a difficult task it is. Listen at that. He said, then I went into your sanctuary. What, what happens in the sanctuary? The word of God. He said, when I went to the sanctuary, when I went to church, and I heard the preaching, I knew that they're in was to be destroyed. He said, oh God, and I finally understood the destiny of the wicked. So, you know, when you look at drug dealers and all the money they have and all that, it's don't wicked. worry about it. <laughs> it's going it's to end. It's going to catch up and it's going to end. Jonah was having worldly success, but we know according to the word of God, he was living in disobedience. We know that. Because we know his story. He was having worldly success. But because we know what verse 2 say in his life, we know he was living in disobedience. So if we're on the outside looking in, we can have a false illusion that Jonah is doing what God has told him to do. And the only way to tell is by the word of God. Only way to tell. And that's why we look at Matthew 7. This is a great, great parable. I think we had this in our uh, mission lesson a few weeks ago. Listen to what Jesus said. Anyone who listens to my teaching and follow it, which means do it, it's like a person who builds a house on a solid rock. Anybody who listens to my word and do it is like a person who builds his house on a solid rock. Now watch this. Though the rain comes and torments and the floodwaters rise and the winds beat against that house, it won't collapse. Because he heard the word and he did it. So no matter what happens in his life, when that happens, his house won't collapse. Because he built it on a rock. Doing God's word is the same as building your house on a rock. So when the storm comes, it won't collapse. Now watch this. But anyone who hears my word and doesn't do it is really a fool. It's like a person who builds a house on sand. When the rains and the flood comes. Now this is what this is what's amazing about this, this parable that Jesus gives. It's the same house and it's the same storm. The floods came. The rain came and the winds blew. Mm -hmm. That's that same house happened to the other guy. The only difference is his house crashed. crashed. The only reason why his house crashed is because he heard the word but didn't do it. Jonah, he heard the word but he didn't do it. And we know that when the storm finally came in Jonah's life, he crashed. Didn't he? Oh yeah, he crashed. See, he was alright as long he, as he could find the boat and had the money in his pocket to buy the ticket to go to Tarshish. But God eventually will see some storm. And his life crashed. So you have to build your life according to the word of God. Not according to houses and money jewelry, none of that. Your life has to line up with the word of God. Because if, when the storms come, and the storms will come, your house will stand. So sooner or later, you're going to have a great fall because your building is built on sand. Amen? Amen. Alright, so if you remember Pharaoh, when God told Moses to uh, let my people go, you know that story. And Pharaoh said, I ain't going to do it. And it's, it, it would seem 
as if after Moses went to Pharaoh the first time, that Pharaoh's disobedience to God would have manifested itself after the first time. After the first plague, which I believe they turned uh, the, the rods into snakes, it seems that that would have been enough. But because God is loving and kind and patient, God gave him nine more chances. It seemed like he was getting away with it. Even after the second plague, even after the third plague, even after the fourth plague, even after the fifth plague, even after the sixth plague, seven, eight, nine, all the chances God had given him. And you know what? Y'all, we don't even know the time span between the first plague and the tenth plague. It could have been ten years. We don't know. But we know he gave him all those chances. And during, after the first time, it seemed like Pharaoh said, I got away with this. I'm good. All he's going to do is turn my rod into a snake. I mean, all he's going to do is turn uh, my river into blood. All he's going to do is send hell. All he's going to do is flies. All he's going to do is frogs. But when he finally got to that temple, when he took that his only child, that's when he humbled himself. He had to crash. He had to crash. Because you do not base your success on worldly stuff. You base your success on the word of God. Amen? Mm -hmm. So let's look at verse 4. I said I wasn't going to choose long. Give me 10 more minutes. Verse 4. It says in verse 4, But the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea. And there was a, great, a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was like to be broken. Verse 3, Jonah is in God's permissive will. In other words, God allowed it. Jonah is doing what he want to do. But in God's permissive will, judgment will come. Eventually. As Pharaoh. Judgment will come. Verse 4 is the beginning of Jonah's judgment. So, we are talking about who was attached to Jonah's disobedience. Who was affected by it. Because when we are, when we are walking in disobedience, it, it, would, it would suggest to us that it's just about me and God. It would suggest that what I'm doing has nothing to do with you. But it has everything to do with me and God. Which is partly true. But other people are affected by the decisions we make. And that's what we want to look at. So, I want to look at one today. And then I'm going to stop. But we're going to have our prayer warriors come and pray for our last Wednesday prayer. Who was affected by Jonah's disobedience? Who was attached to this disobedience? The very first person that was attached to this disobedience was the Lord. God was affected by that. God was disturbed by what Jonah was doing. Never ever think that what we do in our lives that God does not care. Jonah just one man. It would seem like God would say, it's just Jonah. It's just one person. But when God has an assignment for you to do, when God has a will for you to do, you ain't just one person. But remember, Romans 14 and 7, we don't live for ourselves. We have to be accountable to him. Notice this. This says... The Lord. Now, if if we take this off and the sin off and the out off and just say a great wind came, then we could say that was just the weather. Mm. But 
no. God was behind this. Now, we looked at verse 3. It said, but Jonah. When we look at verse 4, we see, but the Lord. So anytime you go and get into a budding match with God, you're going to lose. <laughs> you're going to lose. Because God has all power. We're just the creation. We can't control anything. But we are disobeying a God that can control the weather. Look at this. But the Lord sent. God did this. Jonah is letting us know who was behind this storm. God sent a great wind into the sea. And there was a mighty tempest into the sea. So that the ship was like to be broken. God was disturbed. God was disturbed. So you know what this 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 really makes us think. It makes us think. Uh, and I think this is, this is something that we were just discussing before we came online. When we look at these hurricanes, when we look at earthquakes, windstorms, tornadoes. These are just not happenstance. God is in control of this. I can't tell you why God would send a hurricane to Louisiana three times in less than three months. But I can tell you that the Lord sent. <laughs> that, 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 that each hurricane was riding on the passenger side while God was driving the storm. And wherever God wanted it to turn, the hurricane turned. That was the Lord saying. God has been, God has, God has been using weather as a judgment ever since the biblical days. And we never look at it like this, but when you look at uh, Genesis 6, do we have Genesis 6? So God said to Noah, I have decided to destroy all living creatures, for they have filled the earth with violence. Yes, I will wipe them all out along with the earth. That's judgment, isn't it? Well, how are you going to do it? Build a large boat from cypress wood and waterproof. It will tar inside and out. Then construct decks and stalls throughout its interior. Make the boat 450 feet long, 70 feet wide, and 40 feet high. Leave an 18 inch opening below the roof all the way around the boat. Put the door on the, on the side and build three decks inside the boat, lower, middle, and up. Look, I am about to cover the earth with a blood. God has been using weather as judgment ever since Genesis chapter 6. He's been using. He used weather with Pharaoh. Hail, floods. He's, he's always used the weather. He even says in 2 Corinthians chapter 7, he said that, that I will shut up heaven. And he said, but if my people call by my name, God has always used the weather. He's always used the weather as judgment. And he's doing the same thing in the life of John. And I believe he's doing the same thing right now. Because whenever we are out of the will of God as a country, as a world, God is disturbed. And God uses the weather to get our attention. That's one of the ways he used it. He told Elijah, go tell, go tell Ahab. Go tell uh, Jezebel that for three years there won't be no rain and no dew. God, shut heaven up. Turn the water off. He said no rain nor dew. That means there won't be no water on the ground when you wake up in the morning. It's going to be dry. That's weather. God has always used the weather as a sense of 
form of judgment. Because God is always trying to get our attention. So when we upset God, we provoke him to discipline us. Hebrews 12, and I'm going to be through. Because I promise I'll stop at 630. It says, and have you forgotten the encouraging word God spoke to you as his children? We're children, right? We're his children. He said, my child, don't make light of the Lord's discipline. And don't give up when he corrects you. For the Lord disciplines those he loves. And he punishes each one he accepts as his child. As you endure this divine discipline, remember that God is treating you as his own children. Whoever heard of a child who never, who is never disciplined by his father? If God doesn't discipline you as he does all of his children, it means that you are illegitimate and are not really his child at all. Since we respected our earthly fathers who disciplined us, shouldn't we submit even more to the discipline of the father of our spirits and live forever? For our earthly fathers disciplined us for a few years, doing the best they knew how. But God's discipline is always good for us so that we might share in his holiness. So, so judgment is going to come. We can ask for forgiveness, and you'll get it, because he'll forgive you. According to 1 John, he's faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you all unrighteousness. He will forgive you, but you still don't have to deal with the discipline of God. So whatever God is asking you to do, whatever he's asking you to do, what is for his loving, I go back to forgiving, I go back to honoring your parents, your mother and your father, no matter how old you are, that scripture does not have an expiration date on age. Sometimes we think when we get 40 and 50 and 60 that we can treat our parents any kind of way. But the Bible still remains the same. You honor your mother and father. As long as they're your mother, as long as they're your father, I don't care how old you get, you honor them. Their position never changed. Only thing that changed was your age. <laughs> but the position never changed. So if God is asking you to honor your mother and father, you do it. Because if you don't, you're provoking them to judgment. God is asking you to give him your tithe. Give your first to him. Don't give him what's left. Don't give, don't put in an envelope five dollars. You done made five thousand dollars for the week. Don't do him like that. Because judgment is coming. And don't think just because you done bought you a car, bought you some jewelry, got you some clothes, got your lights on. Don't think for a second that you are being successful because you're not, because you're contrary to what God is saying. Judgment gonna come. I can't tell you if you're on the first plague, or the fifth plague, or the eighth plague, but the tenth plague is coming. Because God is a God of his word. And understand, when he decides to discipline you, he says, endure that discipline. In other words, take it in. Look at it. Look at what's going on in your life and say, God, what are you saying to me? What do I need to do? Don't resent it, don't rebel, but receive it. Because resenting his discipline only makes it worse. The whole point of receiving his discipline is to make you holy. To make you better. Because as long as you're walking in disobedience, God's going to send a storm. Storm ain't going to come on his own. And then the first thing we do when we're going through something is pray for me. I'm going through Never do we consider that this could be the judgment that God is putting on me for my disobedience. We want to make God out to be this God that loves and just forgives. But according to Hebrew, he disciplines us because we are his children. So the very first person that was affected 
by Jonah's disobedience and his pers permissive will was the law. That should have been enough right there. But we're going to see a chain reaction as we pick up our lesson on next Wednesday. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank God for that lesson. Um, tonight, we're going to get ready to have our, uh, our uh, prayer for our different subjects. On tonight, our prayer warriors are going to come and get in their places. We have a very special, special guest on um, tonight. We're going to be praying for Brother Mark Gibson, our deacon, who is uh, recovering from the surgery. And we're going to be lifting him up. But we have a very special guest on tonight that's going to be praying in his stead. And the person is a special surprise. <laughs> and we'll let you see her or him momentarily. Would you pray with us on tonight? This is our last Wednesday of the month. And on this last Wednesday during this pandemic season, we are taking the time out to pray and ask God to hear our prayers. And our prayers is God's will will be done. We have different subjects that we're going to pray on tonight. We want you to, to go in prayer with us. The Bible says the, the effectual prayer of the righteous avails much. Remember, it's not about the length of the prayer. It's the strength in the prayer. Would you pray with us? Would you bow your heads and pray with us? at this moment as our prayer warriors would come now. Can we pray? Oh, Heavenly Father, which are in heaven, we come this evening, oh, Heavenly Father, asking for forgiveness for our sins. For we all have sinned, Father, show the kingdom of glory, Heavenly Father. Father, we pray for all those that are affected by this virus, oh, Heavenly Father. We pray for those that have been stricken by this virus, oh, Father, we pray for their families. Father, we pray for all the families that have lost loved ones from this virus, oh, Heavenly Father. People are dying all over the world. But Father, we pray for all the doctors that are treating these people, oh, Heavenly Father, treating, uh, treating them every day, leaving their houses to go help others, oh, Heavenly Father. Oh, yeah. Father, we pray for all the nurses that are traveling around the world, around the country, treating people with the COVID, Father. Father, we pray for the scientists that are working on a virus, a cure for this virus. Oh, Heavenly Lord, help. Father, we know one day, one day they'll have one, but we know you, and only you, Father, will heal everybody, oh, Heavenly Father, and we just keep our faith in you. Father, we pray for this country. Father, we pray for you to put out your protection around us, oh, Heavenly Father. Father, we pray that everyone will listen and just wear their masks, oh, Heavenly Father, that we can help do something ourselves, oh, Heavenly Yes, Father. Lord. Father, we pray that one day this will come and this will end. And all we ask for in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Most gracious and wonderful Father, Father, here we are again, Father, just thanking you for your grace, thanking you for your mercy, Lord. You, Lord. Father, we know in your word you said with two or three are gathered, you'll be there in the midst. Father, thank you for those that are under the sound of my voice. Father, those here in the church and those that are on Facebook Live. Father, those that may be on the phone. Father, we come lifting up all the churches, near and far. Father, we just ask that you just continue to bless them. Bless them individually as well as collectively, Father. Oh, Father, we need you this evening. Father, we ask that you just touch, Father, right now, if this be your will, Father. Father, we just ask that you just continue to be with those pastors and those congregations, Father, that preach and teach the word of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, we just ask that you just continue to be with them, continue to provide them an increase, Father. Let that increase, Father, be numerically, Father. Let that increase, Father, be financially, Father. But most important, let that increase be spiritually, Father. We just ask that you touch this evening right now, Father. Father, we love you so much, Father. We just ask that you just continue to be with 
those churches, Father, that find themselves serving those who are homeless, Father, serving those who have no shelter. Father, we just ask that you just be with those outreach programs, Father. Be with the leader that starts the leadership uh, the program, Father. Be with the pastor, Father. Be with those who are in direct contact with the people that bring them in, Father. We just ask that you just touch them, Father. Oh, Father, yeah. we ask that you just be with those who provide COVID testing, Father. We be with those who provide blankets, Father. Everything that a church can provide, Father, we just ask that you be that need, Father, meet that need, Father, so that they can be a blessing to the blessers, Father. We just ask, Father, that you just touch right now. Father, we love you so much. Father, we just ask that you just be with those church ministries. Father, we just ask that you be with the choir. Father, be with the ushers. Be with the greeters. Father, be with all those who make up the church ministries. Father, deacons, associate ministers. Father, we just ask that you just give us all servants' hearts. Yes, Father, we just ask that you just be with our pastors. Father, not just our pastor here at the local church, Father, but pastors around the world. Father, we just ask, Father, that you just continue to give them that leadership. Give them that guidance. Father, touch their hearts, Father, so that that they can preach and teach your word. Crown their heads with wisdom, Father. Yes, Give Lord. them that strength, Father, that they need from day to day. Father, we know that this race is not given to the swift, Father, but so we just ask that you just give it to them, Father, that you just touch their hearts, Father. We just ask, Father, that you just anoint their heads, Father, with wisdom. Father, we ask that as they stand in the pulpits, Father, that you just give them the knowledge to preach and teach the gospel, and that someone will come running down saying, what must I do to be saved? Father, we ask that you just bless their parents, their families, Father. Bless the parents, bless the wives, bless everyone that's supporting them, Father. Father, we need you this evening. And Father, we just ask that you just continue to be with them. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Oh, Lord, our Lord, I ask none is thy name in all the earth. This again, our God, our Father, we come this evening lifting up your name because you are worthy to be praised. We thank you for your grace and for your mercy. We realize we didn't make it on our own. Well, yeah. Lord, if it had not been for you on our side, truly, where would we be? Pray, God, as we come today, we want to lift up your people all over the world. Pray for wisdom. Pray for understanding. Pray for knowledge, Lord. Because, Father God, the knowledge of the Lord, the respect of the Lord, is knowing the Lord. And we pray for those that don't know you in the everlasting pardon of their sins. Pray that you would touch right now that you will forgive us right now all of our sin. Wipe our slate clean. Give us another chance. And we pray for those that don't acknowledge you as God, don't respect you as God, don't know you as God. We pray for the politicians. We pray for those in, yes. in, in government agencies. Yes. We pray, Father God, for those in high places, looking down, Father God, upon the people that they're supposed to be serving. Oh, yeah. We pray, God, that you will help today. Father God, help with this coronavirus. We pray, Lord God, that you know all about it. You allow it. And we know, God, that you have a will and a way for your people to come back to you. Yes, Lord. We pray, God, that you will move tonight, that you will touch somebody tonight. Somebody that might be in the hospital, sick. Somebody that might be suffering with this coronavirus. Even the doctors and the nurses and those in the hospital uh, agency, Father God, that's dealing with this, the insurance people, everybody, Lord God, need your hand, need your knowledge, need your understanding. I pray, God, that you would touch them right now, that they would turn their life over unto you, that you would help tonight. We pray, God, as we come tonight, we want to lift up, Father God, this country. Pray that you would bless us right now. Bless every member, everyone that's called upon your name. We thank you now for your church. We thank you for your preachers and your pastors. <clears throat> we thank you for First Baptist. We thank you for Pastor Bell. We thank you for our social ministers, leaders, and leadership position. Lord God, that they will stand upon your word and that your word will come to pass. And Father God, that your word one day will judge each and every one of us according to your judgment 
and according to our sin. We thank you now. We bless you. We love you. We praise you in the mighty precious name of Jesus the Christ. We ask in all Christ's name. Amen. Lord, our God, as we come this evening, Lord, we come calling your holy name in the way that we only know this way, Lord. Because, Lord, we realize that we come this way, Lord, we come to you, Lord, knowing that you can make anything possible, Lord. We come today, Lord, to continue to pray for the our school system, Lord, we continue praying for the, the children, continue praying for the teachers, continue praying for all of those, Lord, that have a part of these kids' life, Lord. Oh, Lord, we realize we are in your hand, and that you, Lord, can do all things. We realize that you can take this virus away from us today if it's your will, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, Lord, we, we pray, Lord, that the children will be obedient, Lord, and and do what they are asked to do, Lord. Oh, Lord, we realize that wearing the mask, wearing face shield, is not our protection. Our protections come from you, Lord. So, Lord, we, we pray, Lord, that you just give us strength. Because we realize we need your strength, Lord. Because we realize it's your favor by the Lord. It gets tired sometimes, Lord. But we know, Lord, we, we just continue trusting you. Yes. That everything will be all right, Lord. We pray, Lord, that the that, that, that the, our children be saved, Lord. We pray, Lord, when they leave their home, Lord, that their parents don't have nothing to worry about, Lord, because we realize that you can take care of them, Lord. Now, Lord, we, we thank you, Lord, for all that you do for us, Lord. Realize we are undeserving, Lord, but you continue to bless us and bless us. And we feel like, Lord, that you're going to bless us through this, Lord. We realize that people act like they know everything, Lord. The president, the government, all of them act like they know everything, Lord. But all the person that know everything is you, Lord. And we realize that you have the power to do all things, Lord. So we, we pray for the schools you know, in a different way, Lord. They, they try to do a, a lot, Lord, playing sports, Lord, and, and all of that, Lord. But, yeah. Lord, be with them and, and, and touch their body, Lord, and strengthen them, Lord, and they go through this, Lord. We read the news every day, Lord, that this COVID-19 is taking over the schools, Lord. We, 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 the last count that we had, Lord, that the, the school in Katy, Lord, had so many people, Lord, that have the virus, Lord. But, Lord, we pray, Lord, that we don't give up on you. Hold on to your unchanged hand, and everything will be all right, Lord. We, we believe that, Lord. Yes, Lord. We trust you, Lord. We ask you for your guidance. In Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Go to an everlasting Father God, we come once more, dear Father. Thank you for this blessed moment. Thank you, Lord. Father, we know you provided this moment for us. And you, you gave us the opportunity to call on your name again, dear Father. You gathered us together, Father, some are on the phone. Some are online, and we are here in this building, Father. Bless our church, Father. Father, we are, we are one in your name, dear Father. You organize the church, and we are trying to do your will, Father. Bless our family, our family connection, Father. Yes. We know that we all won't make it until we get back together, Father. But what, whoever will be back, Father, you be with us, Father. Thank you, Father. If I'm with them, let me be with them. But if not, I know you coming back to get me, Lord. Oh, Lord, let your will be done in our lives, Father. Bless our children. Let that our members keep on holding on to your unchanging hand, Father. Let them not give up on you because you don't give up on us. Father, you are patient with us yes, every day of our lives, Father. Yes, you open our eyes. You let us see the new day. You Sometimes we sin. Sometimes we stumble. But you are forgiving God, Father. Bless our church, Father. Draw us closer to you, Father. Oh, yes. This pandemic is being used for purpose, Father. Yes, Lord. And Father God, let us learn from that. Yes, Lord. And the government, we're learning from that. Yes, let us all grow from what we're experiencing today, Father. Mm -hmm. Let your will be done in our life. Yes, we thank you for all yes. you've done, Father. 
Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Crown Warriors. Thank you, Sister Wilkins, for filling in for Brother Mark Gibson. And uh, we want to continue to pray for uh, what's going on in our country. You know, our country is in a bad way. Amen. Got a divided government, divided country. And uh, we, we have to pray for our country to, to be unified, so we can come together. We want to lift up those who are dealing with this coronavirus directly or indirectly. I think all of us know someone who has been affected by this virus in a, in a negative way. So whoever they are, we want to pray for them and we'll just continue to pray for each other. 200, over 225,000 people have lost their lives. Uh, that's the count that we know of. So uh, this has, this has definitely, definitely affected a lot of people. And uh, in spite of what our president is telling us, we are not turning the corner. Amen. So it's imperative that we continue to be disciplined, be obedient to the scientists, uh, that, that we could, could get through this. Let me uh, start by uh, giving us our COVID report. Uh, we've been giving this report since we've been having Bible study, and uh, we, we see that here in the Galveston County community, the numbers are still uh, relatively under 100, uh, with the exception of, of two dates. On the 20th was 53, 22nd was 41, and the uh, 23rd was 35, the 24th was, was pretty high, 73. August 25th uh, was the uh, 25th, 26th, 36th, and then of course October 27th was 86, with a, a total of 324 new cases. And so we we see how, how it's, it's going up and fluctuating a little, going down a little, but uh, still staying under 100. Which is, which is good news. So we are going to keep continue to be praying uh, that uh, God will continue to constrain or contain this, this coronavirus. Our next announcement will be for this Saturday on, our, on behalf of our youth department. And uh, we know that uh, we, we are unable to, to come together collectively for our uh, kids. We would normally have something for them during the period of Halloween. And so this coming Saturday, uh, we have already posted this on our church page. We will have a Hallelujah Wing treat bag uh, for, our, for our youth department this coming Saturday between 5 and 6 p.m. Now, we're asking that when you drive, it's a drive-by, that when you come, that you would drive up under the canopy, and our, our youth leaders will be uh, available to give you a, a treat bag and uh, just say hi to you and let you know we're thinking about you and that we miss you and let our youth know that we're still trying to stay connected with you. So come by, please bring your, your child by Saturday between 5 and 6 o'clock. It's coming Saturday between 5 and 6. Bring your child by, uh, let them drive by and, and we'll have a bag for them that they can take home and eat be hyperactive for the rest of the day. <laughs> so, so please don't, don't uh, deny them the opportunity to come by the church uh, this coming uh, Saturday between 5 and 6 p.m. And our youth leaders will be waiting for you. All right, the next announcement will be the days that you can pick up your large supper for the month of uh, November. And that will be this coming Sunday between 10, 15, and 11, 15. Or you can pick it up November the 2nd, which is a Monday, between 5.30 and 6.30 p.m. And these are the days if you want to, to uh, come pick up the sacraments or the Lord's Supper, you can come on these particular dates and time. And we will observe the Lord's Supper uh, 
next Wednesday, uh, right after Bible study. Amen. Uh, this coming Tuesday uh, is election day. And so we want to encourage you that if you have not voted, that you please go and vote. Uh, and make sure that you can uh, let your, your voice count. So please go and vote. If you have not voted, I encourage you to please go and vote. Uh, your, your vote can be cannot be counted until it is first cast. So this coming Tuesday, you can go and vote. Uh, we will not have uh, uh, any missions on uh, this coming Tuesday. Uh, senior missions or uh, junior missions. Uh, I left it up to the junior mission discretion. If they wanted to be on Zoom and uh, senior mission as well. But if you decide not to have it this Tuesday, that's okay. Uh, but we want you to Go and vote, and uh, if you ain't voting, if you already voted, then that's the time you need to start praying. Amen. Amen. That the Lord would would make give us a, a change, and that that we can come out from under this judgment that we are under under this Republican president. So please, please, sirs and ma'am, go and vote this coming Tuesday, November the third. That's all I have. We want to pause. Uh, for a moment that you can give to us on our Givelify through our social media. We appreciate your offering on tonight. Uh, we thank God for uh, lights still being paid, mm -hmm. that we can continue to promote God's gospel via social media. But we have to do it through money because ministry costs. Ministry is not free. And so whatever you can help give and help support us at our church, help us to continue to be able to do what we're doing, that you can continue to give Bible lessons and still stay, stay safe. Uh, give the five is First Baptist Church, 2120 36th Street North. So we thank you for tuning in with us. Thank you for donating seeds to our uh, Give the Five account. And we pray that you continue to support us on our social media. And we start our morning worship at 9 a.m., on Sunday morning. We pray that you will stay safe, stay warm, and we'll continue to pray for you as you continue to pray for us. And we're going to ask that you bow your head and we will dismiss in prayer. Father, thank you for our prayer warriors on tonight. We pray, God, for those who are sick. We lift up our deacon, Brother Mark. We pray for Brother Jay Williams, Brother Robert Merchant, and the other names, Master needs prayer, we, we lift them up before you. Pray for our youth. God, we pray that they will, that you will remind them about this Saturday that they can come out and receive the gifts from our youth department. Thank you for those who are teaching during this social media, during our pandemic. Thank you for their service. Thank you for those who are operating our technology that the gospel can be heard. Thank you for our deacons who serve this church faithfully. And we just pray that you continue to give us the strength to keep moving forward. And we ask it now in your son Jesus the Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.